Welcome to watching this video on property rights and market failure with special reference to environmental goods. Market failure occurs when market mechanism fails to sustain desirable activities like releasing treated water into the water bodies or stop undesirable activities like factories emitting smoke into the atmosphere. In this video, we shall examine the first important cause of market failure, namely the absence of well-defined property rights. To understand market failure, we need to understand the nature of environmental goods. As explained in the previous uh, video, environmental goods are both non-excludable and non-rival. This leads to the question as to who owns these environmental resources like air, ocean and habitats. Since there is a lack of clarity on the ownership of these resources, we can understand the issue of market failure from this ownership perspective. So, what are property rights and how are these property rights are defined? Property rights are a bundle of entitlement, which means it defines an owner's rights, privileges and limitations to use a particular resource. For example, if an individual owns a piece of land, then he has rights to the property in the way he wants to uh, use that property. There are certain privileges because of that ownership, the fruits that grow on the tree, on that land, all belong to him. At the same time, there are certain limitations in the use of that property. It means that the owner of the property cannot do whatever he wants to do with the property harming others in society. For example, he cannot take mud out of that land and throw it at a passerby because the mud belongs to him. So every property right has got certain rights, certain privileges and certain limitations to its use. Property rights actually are uh, the most complex and the most difficult set of issues that any society has to resolve. So the question is, why have these property rights at all? And if these property rights do not exist, uh, what happens to the resources and in environmental economics, especially when property rights are not well defined, how do we study environmental economics? So let's look at the need for property rights. The free market economy relies on private property rights. Property rights are important in the neoclassical framework in which the environmental economics is studied. All economic incentives and disincentives operate within the complete property rights framework. Why should a person take care of a resource or make improvements on it when it does not belong to, it, to him wholly? Now apply this to environmental resource. Why should somebody take care of the air, the forest or the, the ocean or the fishes? Because the benefits of taking care of these resources will not come to any one person. So that is the issue of property rights. Another way to look at the property rights issue is to look at it from a seller and buyer's point of view. A seller cannot sell his goods without having exclusive rights over his property. Similarly, a buyer cannot enjoy the property unless he has got exclusive rights over the property by purchasing it from somewhere. So buying and selling are two important activities that are essential part of property rights. So now we have to see what are the features of property rights. Let's look at the elements of property right. The first element of property right is that of transferability. All property, full property right owners can sell, lease or rent out their property to anyone of their choice based on economic rationale. Now, if you apply this element to environmental resources like forest or uh, um, uh, the uh, rivers or the air, we find that we cannot rent out, sell out or lease out these rights of using these resources to anyone because no one owns these resources. 
The second character is that the property rights are exclusive, which means a person has exclusive authority on how to determine the, this uh, use of the resources. The benefits and cost or harmful consequences of a property has to be borne only by the owner of that resources. So the crops that grow on that piece of land or the, uh, the quality of land deteriorates because of the flood or the consequence of uh, um, uh, an earthquake, all these have to be borne only by the owner of that property. Now apply this concept of exclusive rights to environmental resources. What we can understand is that none of these environmental resources of the nature of air or water or uh, soil or forest can be exclusively enjoyed by anyone. These resources are enjoyed by all or if these resources go bad or uh, that quality deteriorates, then everybody who has to encounter these resources will have to bear the consequences. The third character of a property right is that these are universally assigned. That means the uh, it provides access only to authorized agents to use all aspects of a property. So if a land is a private property, then the tree on the land, the fruits that grow on the land, everything is assigned to the owner of that property only. Again, in the case of environmental resources, this is not possible. The fish in the sea is the one that is available to anyone who can go to the fish, to the sea to fish. And finally, the property rights are enforceable by uh, governments. So there is an institutional framework that protects the use of uh, proper, private property and any conflicts that arise in the case of private property will be settled through the legal uh, system. Let's look at the categories of uh, property rights. The first category is known as private property, which is something that we are all familiar with in terms of uh, somebody's secure title over a house or a piece of land or, or anything which uh, allows the person to enjoy the property all for himself. The second category of property rights are called as state property. And this state property uh, is when the state acquires control over a property. These includes the control over reserve forests, protected forests, national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, land lying across um, national highways and state highways or marine fisheries and minerals and lakes. All of these are within the exclusive uh, uh, right of the government because the government has taken control over them. The purpose of government taking control over these resources are to ensure um, that these resources are uh, ex uh, exploited in a reasonable manner and also that these are available for uh, people at, uh, uh, at large and therefore there is justice and equity in its usage. Third category of uh, uh, property is known as common property resources. These are owned in common by an identifiable group of people. And these are set in social conventions. There are norms which can also be legally enforceable. And there are uh, rules and set of rules and procedures for the use of these resources. People who are a part of this group are generally engaged in protecting that uh, common property. And they make arrangements in such a way that this property is uh, preserved in the interest of the common good. Now this can take the form of village pond, village uh, tank, then grazing grounds. All these are um, uh, adhered to within the structure that has been. People are willing to engage in following the rules and regulations or concerning the property so that this property is available for a sustainable use. However, this common property resource also has this character of non-excludability and uh, on the other hand it is a rival resource that means it is possible that these resources can be overused if too many people uh, start using this uh, resource the fourth category of uh, environmental resources are uh, the one that falls in the open access regime this open access regime is the one that is the matter of maximum concern for environmental uh, economists and scientists 
these properties are nobody's property there are no property rights for that it is a free for all anybody can use it in any way they want they have unrestricted freedom to use it and there are no rules and regulations regarding the use of such properties for example the ocean the air the um, uh, hills and mountains nobody owns them everybody has access to them whoever can access it so these kind of resources are the most misused mismanaged and uh, resources that have got the danger of being degraded polluted and also um, uh, eliminating anything that is possible to sustain them in long due course of time examples like air and that is why we see air is so badly polluted we also find beaches we find a uh, forest which are not controlled by the government all these are open access resources so what can result to everybody trying to use these resources to their selfish aim or to their self-interest which is famously called as the tragedy of commons it also gives rise to the problem of a free rider everybody wants to enjoy these resources without making payment for the use of these kind of resources thus when property rights are not clear we understand that environmental resources are subject to market failure and market transactions cannot happen. Therefore, desirable activities cannot be um, uh, sustained and undesirable activities cannot be stopped because there are no ownership for these kind of resources. Thank you very much. I hope you have been uh, watching the videos on environmental economics and getting to know the interesting aspect of environmental economics. The next video will be on uh, externalities as a cause of market failure.